Rosa was making decisions and I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? Hey guys, it's Michaela back again with another video and this one is going to be another installment of my One Buck Book series. If you don't know, my One Buck Book series, why don't I pick something so goddamn hard to say, is a series in which I buy and read and review books for one dollar. So far all of the books I have purchased for this series um, have come from the Dollar Tree which is like right around the corner from my house so that's very nice but I'm absolutely open to getting books from one dollar from elsewhere um, that's just where I've gotten them so far. I started the series because I saw that the Dollar Tree was selling books like hardcover real published books from like publishers I recognize and I was like what are these books doing here? are they here because they suck are they here because they're not selling like i don't understand what why are they in the dollar tree um so i was just curious and now it's sort of like a, a thing that i do so today i am going to be reviewing what is actually an italian novel that has been translated into english um, which i'm very excited about if you don't know i majored in italian in undergrad so there is a uh, soft spot in my heart for italian literature the book is at the wolf's table by rosella postanino and it won an award what was the award it won hold on it won the Premio Campiello, one of Italy's most important literary awards. I don't know what that award is, but it won it, which I can't necessarily disagree with because I loved this book. So At the Wolf's Table tells the story of Rosa Sauer, who is a 25-year-old young woman living in, she's from Berlin, but she is now living in Prussia with her parents-in-law. Her husband is fighting for Germany in World War II. And so she has moved to this like small, small town in Prussia to live with her parents-in-law. And almost as soon as she moves in, or like shortly after she moves into this tiny town, she basically gets shanghaied into being one of Hitler's food testers. Hitler is staying in an encampment nearby and they need 10 women from the town to taste his food before he eats it so that if there is poison in it they will die and not him sort of right off the bat i do want to give one critique and it is what i thought this story was going to be about based on the description on the inside flap versus what it's actually about like i said there are 10 women who every day basically at this place that it used to be a school and it's now like a compound they're here all day breakfast through dinner each woman eats a couple different parts of the meal so that way they can like isolate if something's been poisoned they can like figure out which element has been poisoned and they have to eat breakfast lunch and dinner in this place like away from their families they get paid but they had to you know spend all this time away from their families basically waiting to see if they're going to die for hitler and basically two groups form within these 10 women the few women who are like so happy to be doing this like super just like pro hitler pro fuhrer like happy to lay my life down for him like this is our duty as German women and then the others who are like we're here because they'll kill us if we don't like we're here because we don't have another choice I thought based on how it was presented like I said on the inside flap that the crux of the story was going to be the relationship between these two groups between like the fanatics as the ones who are very pro Hitler come to be called and the others but in reality the women who are the fanatics are like a very very small part of the story and almost have nothing to do with the plot at all, which is not what, just not what I thought it was going to be about. And that doesn't mean I think it was bad because that wasn't what it was about. It's just kind of, I don't know, maybe I just misinterpreted the flap, although I read it again and I still got that same sensation for it. But basically this is a story about like this small town and the, the friendship that forms between the non-fanatical women who almost all of them are from this small town. They have different backgrounds, they have different relationships to their nationality, to Germany, to the Third Reich, to the war, to the concept of family and womanhood, and they sort of have to figure that out for themselves and with each other. It's very hard to talk about this book without giving spoilers, um, because A, there are a ton of things to spoil, and B, it's not very long. It's less than 300 pages, and there's so many things that happen that, like, there isn't necessarily like, a ton of space in between to, like, digest things, which normally I would actually not like, but I liked it in here because it really felt like wartime. It felt like what happens when things are happening very quickly and you kind of have to make a decision on the fly. Am I going to just roll along with this or am I going to say something? And like Rosa rolls along with things and like having to deal with that 
guilt and responsibility of like knowing that even though she's not out there murdering people she's not out there burning down jewish businesses and turning in jewish neighbors to the gestapo even though she's not doing those things she is not working against them either and like that makes her complicit and like it's an issue for her you know she has to fight against that complicity and figure out what role she's going to play if she's going to play one at all this book is also about how even systems of oppression from which you on the surface benefit those systems still oppress you too because oppression necessarily means inequality and even if you are in the group in power even if you are white and blonde and blue-eyed power seeks to consolidate in tighter and tighter spaces so because she is a woman her life is expendable to the war effort so they picked 10 women to do this thing to put their lives on the line and taste Hitler's food because it is better that 10 women die than Hitler because they're worth nothing and he's worth everything. Again, without getting into a ton of spoilers, this book really gets into grief and guilt and loss and anger and trauma. The really complicated realities of war, even when war hasn't touched where you are, even though it's incredibly easy to tell yourself that the war is happening elsewhere, that the war belongs to another place, to another group of people, how that doesn't change the fact that you're being touched by it in your everyday life. This is an incredibly twisty book, which I didn't expect. A lot of events unfold in Rose's life in a way that I really didn't expect. I was tense basically the entire time I was reading this. When I finished the book, my stomach, oh, my muscles are as though I had just done like a hundred crunches because I was like, tense the entire like final half to third of this book there were a lot of times like i did truly did not know what was coming next rose was making decisions and i'm like bitch what are you doing people in her life are making decisions and i'm like bitch what are you doing the writing was incredibly lovely the translator is someone named leah janiseko janiseko i'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it but they did an incredibly good job translating this and because i majored in italian i have read and translated um a bunch of Italian text. Two years ago I actually translated all of the third Harry Potter book from Italian into English by hand. It was a really great experience. I really loved it. Translating directly from Italian is hard because their writing style is very different from an English writing style and particularly an American English writing style. It's not the same. You know, for one, we use way more punctuation. We tend to qualify things a lot more. I feel like we use a lot more um, like prepositional phrases. I don't really know how to sort of describe it. It's just different. I thought that I was going to be able to like really tell that this was written in Italian, but I forgot a lot. I forgot that this was an originally an Italian text. It was translated very well into English. It feels like a native native English text and not an Italian text that has been translated. I would actually really like to read the Italian version of this book um, and I'm actually considering getting it so I can read it in Italian. It's very highly praised, it's an international bestseller, so I bet the Italian version is also really amazing and I would like to see the ways in which they differ just in terms of writing. I don't expect the story to differ or anything like that, I expect the story to be the same, but just in terms of writing, while I loved the writing in this, I thought it was very beautiful, very poetic, very vivid. Although I will say, for a book that was about food tasting, I thought that the food writing was only okay, definitely not the best I've read. You know, I expected much more like vivid descriptions of food, but there weren't that many and I was like, this is a book where food is like part of the plot. It's on the cover. Like, I, I, I don't know, I just expected more food. But I, I still liked it. I still liked the descriptions. I feel like a lot of times when a character's having a lot of internal struggles, it can sometimes read like Harry Bradshaw in the Sex and the City column, where it's just like lots of like asking myself generic cliche questions. And that wasn't what this was. Her parsing through her feelings on the world was like very complicated. I believed that she was having these struggles and especially how she would sometimes like think really deeply and really hard about an issue and like get so caught up in thinking about it that she had to like shut it down and then just sort of like be a robot for a little while. That was very interesting and I think again goes back to that like trauma and grief and war and how sometimes everything is overwhelming and then sometimes it's nothing at all because you have to do one of the other. Having that sort of level of in-betweenness of like, you know, stewing in a subject for a while and like letting it sort of roll over you is not a liberty that you have when 
horrific things are happening around you. So like I said, I got this book for $1 at the Dollar Tree. Maybe you can pick this up at your Dollar Tree as well. I very much enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. So I paid a dollar. Would I pay full retail price for it? This is definitely of the one book books I have done so far. This is my favorite by far. However, the retail price for this is $27 and like I'm sorry this book is way too short to cost $27. I understand that because this is a book translated from another language it has that additional cost of having to pay the translator like I get that but this book is only 275 pages that's like 10 cents a page that's extremely expensive for a book that I read in one day. If this book were sort of like what I would consider a normal hardcover price for something this big, which would be $17, $18, I would say yes, it is worth the money. But $27, I can't justify like the how big it is and how much there is in it with that price. Like that is incredibly expensive for a book. I don't know what the paperback price would be. I don't even know if it's out in paperback because the English translation only came out last year so it might not even have a paperback copy yet. If there is a paper paperback copy um, I'm assuming it's going to be cheaper than $27 and then in that case I would pick it up but that I can't justify that. If you can get it for a dollar at the Dollar Tree have at it otherwise I would maybe wait for a, a paperback if that's coming out. But yeah four stars I really do recommend. Very just tense thoughtful complicated scary weird book that I did not expect to love this much. So that is it for this one book book review. I will have the others linked below or up on the screen. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Okay bye!